Welcome back, everybody. Super excited. We've got Jason Rindel here, and I'm pronouncing it right? Yes, that's Excellent. right. Excellent. Perfect. You know, Jason's here representing... Athletics New Brunswick. Perfect. Jason, what is Athletics New Brunswick? Athletics New Brunswick is the, uh, the governing body for track and field, road, ra road racing, cross country. Uh, in Europe, it's called Athletics. In North America, track and field. But, yeah. How'd you get involved? Uh... So born into it, we'll say. Uh, parents were runners and then coaches, and my father is an administrator. And then I was an athlete, my brother was an athlete. And eventually it just kind of became a post-secondary education and now a career. So it's my understanding you're, you're not from around here. Do you tell us a little bit where you're from and what brought you here? Uh, originally from uh, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Uh, born and raised, prairie boy, prairie boy and uh, you know, Rough Rider fan and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but... Uh, Competed, did my thing, started coaching, and the job market wasn't the best. So I actually ended up in Korea teaching English, and uh, then I uh, got a call one day saying, do you want a job in New Brunswick? Nice. Uh, so I got here. So how long have you been here? I uh, just had a two-year anniversary a couple weeks ago. Okay, so, so have you always held the same role? or uh, Since I arrived, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So are you still involved? You were involved with the varsity rights. Are you still involved in the varsity race? Yes, I am uh, head coach of the track and field team. Just making sure. Track. I'm just yeah. making sure I'm up to date on my facts. Yeah. I asked about your page earlier. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys have a pretty good season? Very good, very good. The program's only been around for four years, and in that time we went from having a team of nine to ten athletes. Wow. Now we've got 50 plus, and both teams finished third in our conference championships, and uh, very good. So track and field, is that something that requires a lot of recruiting? Is it walk-ons? It, it's a combination of both. As we're becoming more successful, my job in the recruiting department is being more, uh, we'll say, pushed to try and do a little better at it. Sure. And uh, this year it's going quite well. We've got a few local kids who signed on. Uh, ben Fowler and Josh Shanks out of St. John. Uh, Sidney McDonald and Haley Cook and Amir Rashid. And a new girl, Rachel Bennett from Ontario. So things are improving. And it's my understanding you were coaching uh, in Saskatchewan. And were you ever, did you ever come down here for the track and field championships that we had here in Moncton? Or? No, I was already in Korea at the oh, time. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I was, uh, had a few friends who came, so well aware. You, have you heard good things about it? I thought it went pretty well. Very well. The reception across the, across the globe, because I actually spoke to some guys in Korea about it, was wow. very positive. So, you know, Moncton and New Brunswick has made a, a good name for themselves in the track and field community. Yeah, I didn't know a whole lot about track and field before I went to the event, but, you know, it was, I thought it was very interesting. It seemed like there was always something going on. Uh, you know, you had someone running the track, and then right, as soon as the race ended, you know, you had uh, the javelin or the shot put or the high jump. And the, or, yeah, the organization was great. I yeah, it's, it's, like, like, it's, uh, I'm glad I checked it out because it's, you know, you, I'd never seen track and field before. You, like, ran a little bit, but, you know, to be there, it's, uh, you know, it seemed like a fast pace. There was always something going on. It's interesting. Before the show started, you mentioned that you had uh, some travel coming up. And where are you heading? Uh, heading to Phoenix. Yeah. Next week, uh, part of a coaching apprenticeship opportunity okay. through the World Athletic Center, which is a brainchild of a former world champion Olympian. And he's created this, let's say, track and field mecca. <laughs> and uh, so getting the opportunity to learn from their coaches and uh, um, Dan Papp, who is Donovan Bailey's coach, 96, you know, Canadian legend, yeah. he's kind of in charge of the coaching education aspects, and so get a chance to kind of shadow him while he's working with a, a world record holder. It's kind of... So essentially, uh, from a track point of view, I mean, you've got some pretty, uh, pretty amazing mentors in, in, your, in your, you know, your entourage, I guess we'll call them, that, you, that you've met in the, over the last period of time, where you're about to meet as well. Yeah, I've, I've been very fortunate in what I've been able to do over the last, you know, couple of years. Uh, I was in... Florida back in December for an international level course and and the same thing the, the presenters there I've been reading reading their books for you know 10 15 years and going now I'm getting to hang out with these guys and really ask them the in-depth questions so it's a it's a great opportunity oh that's right on and actually you mentioned uh, Don and Bailey and that's somebody that you know when I I was growing up he was the you know he was the the star athlete growing up and I know I really looked up to him. Is there someone that you looked up to uh, growing up as far as, you know, track and field athletes? Uh, you know, Donovan was 
my father actually ran, uh, he brought in the Invitational Athletes, and so I've actually had the pleasure of speaking with Donovan on the phone, and a number of our Canadian Olympians, so, uh, you know, getting to meet them in the hotel, and, you know, just chat with them as a, a young little guy, you know, always looking up, uh, I can't really single out one, because there's always, you know, just dozens, you know, calling the house and getting to chat with them, so, very, very interesting at times. With your uh, pretty wide, I mean, looking at your resume, essentially, on, on what you've done, I mean, time, I'm sure there's tons of memories that you would have, but tell us about one of your favorite memories. Uh, so, back in 2009, I was able to coach, I was still in Saskatchewan, and I coached a, a young man to win the national 3 meter hurdle title, and he broke my provincial record when I won nationals 10 years to the day. Oh, wow. So that was... That was pretty pretty exceptional in the you know grand scheme of things. So a little bit of a bittersweet moment, you know, seeing your record fall. But. Yep, and it was the last time it was ever run too. We changed some of the the event specs, and so that was kind of it. The record so was way over. Yeah, yeah it was to hold it it forever. Ah, and yeah, so but it was worth it. You're so, so proud of it. Oh, all <laughs> pride can't even describe how I felt, and so yeah. Do you stay in touch with the athlete? Uh, I do, I do. Um, I guess my coaching philosophy is really to get, you know, become almost friends, and uh, so they always, you know, keep on messaging and ask for advice and recommendations on other things in terms of programming, even, you know, girlfriend, boyfriend stuff, so, you know, <laughs> yeah. The big stuff. Yeah, you yeah. know, important stuff for kids. And coaching, it really is a broad term, you know, you do a whole lot more than just the, the on, I guess, in your on-track performance in your case, you know, there's the whole emotional aspect, especially if you're coaching young kids, you know, they're they're growing up and, you know, the hormones are going and stuff like that, so you gotta, it's a tough job. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, I, I start at 6 a.m., we have our first practice, and usually around 2 to 3 per day now, and then once we get in the summer, I'll be on the track from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., and fit in some time to be a travel agent, uh, you know, a course liaison, help with classes, get some recruiting in, talk with officials, and then, uh, try to eat or do something for me <laughs> uh, fit that in, but, uh, you know, the, the list of job requirements is, you know, quite broad. And what is exactly, we talked a little bit at the top of the show about, you know, at their Athletics New Brunswick, what's your role with, with them? Uh, my, my job title is High Performance Coach, and through that I look after a lot of our midget and youth programming, so high school, middle school ages. Uh, in terms of competitions, teams, I try and Keep an, keep an eye on all the kids and make sure they're provided with the information, the opportunity, try and set up some camps and training times along the way, um, and now get in some coaching mentorship opportunities to help our, our coaches of these athletes. So is this, like, is this, uh, is this part of, like, the university or the school, the schools, or is this something that, you know, people just join? Or? Uh, more club-based. So club -based. across the province, we've got a number of clubs in all the different areas. We've got Shalour Athletics up in Bathurst. Uh, Fredericton has several clubs. St. John has one. Moncton has a few in the area. And so what I do is try and liaise with that age group specifically. Uh, we've got another guy, Steve LeBlanc, who works more with the junior seniors, so our 18-plus in the province, and so between the two of us, we try and make sure all our bases are covered. What's, uh, I mean, as far as you being in charge of as many athletes as you are, I mean, if an athlete comes to you and you're a coach, uh, I mean, how do you keep them motivated at all times? Um, motivation to me comes from their goals. So a lot of times I ask them, what do they want to do? And if they can tell me, you know, they just want to be out here and hang out with their friends, that's cool. You know, it's a different motivation, but the athletes that I've been fortunate to work with, they want to be the best in the country, and they want to move beyond, and so for them, it's, you know, we're going to work out twice a day, and they say, why not three? So it's uh, it's an easy job at times. And does New Brunswick have hold a lot of track needs between the clubs, or <laughs> training for another goal? Or? We, we actually have just been finalizing our outdoor schedule uh, this past week, and I think we're up to about 20 meets or so. And uh, yeah, so it'd be uh, everything from, we call it run, jump, throw, Hershey program, so the, the 8 to 12 year olds, into elementary school, middle school, high school championships, and then our junior, senior club provincial championships. And Moncton's actually hosting the uh, Canadian Senior Championships at the end of June. Oh, wow. So our uh, 
all our Olympians, world champions, uh, they'll, they're all coming here. Well, well, that'll be interesting to check out for sure. And uh, i got to ask, you know, you have a sport like hockey where there's a lot of variables and it's not always the same people that win. But if you have, uh, say, a 400-meter race, you know, if you race on today, next month, what are the odds that it's going to be the exact same like, result? Like, is there a lot more variables than people think? Or? Yes. Yes. Uh, a lot of times people think it's, it's just kind of put on the shoes and, and go sprint. Yeah, the fastest. Yeah. yeah, which, you know, is, is kind of true. But, you know, I spend about 15 hours a day thinking about this stuff. And, you know, I travel across the country. And I tell you, it still boggles my mind how many details I have to get right. So it's uh, pretty complicated. What are some of these details or the, the variables? Uh, so if we looked at training volume, so how much running we're doing mm -hmm. during the week, uh, the intensity of that running, so maybe a day is lighter and slower versus the next day's really high speed stuff, so maxing out, uh, then how does the weight room foot fit in? How does something like a medicine ball fit in? How does, you know, into the wind, it would wind up your back? Mm -hmm. um, well, when track comes involved, and I mean, I'm sure with the, you're using a lot of, you know, muscles and energy, injuries must take place. Yes. Uh, how, what precautions do you take to prevent those? Uh, for, for myself and, and my, the athletes that I work with, it always starts with a sound program. I always, you know, I guess I'm, uh, call me mother hen or something, but <laughs> it's safety first. You know, I watch them like a hawk, and, you know, if I see them jogging and they get a little, a little itch, I pull them out right away. Uh, you know, if they kind of watch and they start rubbing their leg or something like that again I'm on them white on rice and you know and say what's wrong what's going on what did you do what's it feel like and eventually they kind of go I should stop <laughs> and I go I agree and, and you know you definitely don't want to push your athletes too much uh, on the week leading up to a, to a meet what what kind of training are they doing you don't want to tire yourself out too much like what's the training like in the week so it depends on the time of the year so from May through most of June We'll go through normal practice schedule and we'll kind of run through the meet. So I don't really, I don't rest them at all. Okay. But then when we get to the final 10 days of our, our national championships, our gold meet, they're going to do next to nothing. And it's just going to be, they show up the track, they do a warm up, they do three easy runs. And I go, see you tomorrow. <laughs> and it's just about making sure the body's still amped up, but, you know, rest is coming up to play and then we see breakthrough performances. At what age, I mean, I'm sure this has been going for a long time, but what age do you usually see, like, competitive track get involved? Uh, competitive track can happen at, at eight years old. You know, again, eight years old, I want to race, I want to win. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But competitive training levels, probably 16 to 18. We want to start looking at reducing sports, um, starting to narrow a focus, and, you know, by, by the end of high school, if you're serious about track, it's going to be your, the only thing you're doing. And where, you, you mentioned uh, recruiting. When you recruit, how do you recruit? Do you go to meets or do you visit schools? Or? Uh, I, I'm lucky in that I get to travel around to schools and do clinics. So I get to grassroots kind of introduction to the kids and, and make those relationships early on. Uh, sometimes, though, it's just sending them an email or a Facebook message saying, hey, so I had a good run on the weekend, or I heard that you like doing high jump, you know, do you want to come out to a practice? And just get the ball rolling, and sometimes they say, oh, yeah, I'm really excited. Other times they go, no, thank you. <laughs> so it's sometimes, you know, you hit or miss, see how it goes. And... Yeah, track is a, being an individual sport primarily, it's something that some people click with and others don't. You know, you've got athletes who like to hide on their teams, and they're not going to like being the, the sole driver of their program. Whereas you've got other athletes who, you know, the guy who, want, who wants the ball, who wants to make that shot at the end, those are the athletes that we look to because they, uh, they don't mind, you know, having a thousand people clapping, cheering their name, and then they've got one high jump to make or break their season. You know, uh, just in We've met you today. I mean, we've talked about all the places you've potentially traveled to or are traveling to. Where so you pretty much covered the globe, but and so one place. What's your favorite place you've ever been? Uh, well, Korea. Yeah, yeah, Korea is. I, I lived there for almost four years, and uh, so it's uh, very near to my heart. <laughs> but uh, Mount Sac, uh, so outside of LA, I got a chance to run there as a high school athlete, and. Uh, 
in terms of me being an athlete, it's still one of the things that I think about and very happy with. Were you, oh, oh, sorry, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was just wondering, were you still running in, in Korea or were you just teaching kind of thing? Just teaching, but uh, I started running uh, marathons and ended up doing uh, two sole international full course marathons and more oh, just wow. uh, trying to keep the weight down. So, <laughs> that's fair. Well, that's good. And we actually, you mentioned recruiting. I was wondering, uh, we had an athlete uh, from out in Jigae, blah, blah, I'm sure you've, you've heard of her. And she's, you know, seems to be one of the best at athletics. She's always performing well. And, uh, you know, she went to, I believe, Ontario, Ottawa, I believe, uh, well, or Guelph, yeah, for uh, four schools. So does New Brunswick lose a lot of its athletes to uh, to other schools, or be working on that to keep them home? <laughs> that, that, that's what we were going to look at. Yeah. In, the past, in the past, we have lost some of our more talented athletes. Um, you know, someone went to Victoria, Guelph, Western kind of thing. But now that we're we're really putting resources into our universities here, uh, U to M, U and B, Stu, we're really trying to, to provide I call it the the Trinity. So academics, athletics, and stay close to home. Mm-hmm. So if we can offer that, you know, it's a win win for everyone. Yeah, I think it's good that you you, you mentioned U and B is growing out of the program. That's good because that's a big reputable inf- or university, and it's good we can keep those athletes close to home. So, we know you eat, sleep, and breathe track. We know that's what you do. When you have a few minutes to yourself, do you watch any other sports? Uh, I do. I do. Uh, Hockey fan. Uh, I'm actually going to see a last regular season game between the Coyotes and the Stars on Sunday. Oh, right. right. For the the final playoff spot. So, uh, it's a big game. Yeah. They're battling for the last spot. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, pretty pumped about that. Um, Soccer is uh, another one. Yeah. Uh, What's your what's your soccer team? Uh, if I got it between Arsenal and Chelsea. Oh, we were, we were watching yeah, Chelsea before we were they were watching the Champions League. Okay. Like, yeah, they were able to, to sneak in. There's pretty exciting stuff. I don't know how you can like Chelsea and Arsenal, but uh, <laughs> I'm a fan. So yeah, like, whatever they have out there playing, I'll watch. Yeah. Did you get a chance to check out the Q game this year? Uh, unfortunately not. Uh, I was gone almost every weekend this year. Uh, from I suppose it makes sense. December fifteenth up until I think March twenty fifth. Well, so I uh, you know I get one weekend off and I don't really want to move off the couch. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Well, right on. Honestly, I can tell you, Jason, we really appreciate you being here. We don't have a whole lot of time left. We've got about twenty five seconds to break. So honestly, this was great, and we've learned more about track. I'm sure in the last eighteen minutes than I think I've learned in thirty four years. So yeah. you know, thanks so much for being here, and uh, you know, I hope everybody else learned lots too and uh, get a chance to check it out. And uh, we're you know, we're really excited. Yeah, perfect. So uh, stick around, guys. We've got uh, Greg and Scott coming in to represent the uh, 40th annual uh, Rattle Speed Sport here in Moncton. See you soon.